Welcome back. Thank you so much for staying with Monday Special, where tonight we're discussing postpartum or postnatal uh, depression. Remember to use the hashtag Monday Special KE on Twitter or text us on double two four double two. I'll introduce you to my panelists be before we take a look at a short video. Right next to me on my right is Lucy Mwangi. She's a television producer, but she has also survived postpartum depression. So she'll take us through her journey and what she learned and what she can teach other women who are going through the same thing. And then we have Dr. Johnston Mihes, so he is a gy gynecologist. He'll take us through some of the issues that women may face during pregnancy and some things that you could probably try and identify that may trigger postpartum uh, depression. And finally, we have Lois Okello, who is a psychologist, to take us through some of the signs, symptoms, and of course, recovery with regards to postpartum depression. Let's first take a look at this snippet, what it really feels like or looks like to have postpartum depression before we start our discussion. New mom thing is hard. I can't do this and I'm never going to be able to do this. I don't want to hold my baby. People think I'm crazy. People think I'm crazy. I'm crazy. And that's what it sounds and feels like for a lot of women who are going through postpartum depression. Before we get Lucy's story, uh, maybe we'll start by asking uh, Doc, uh, Lois O'Kell and of course Dr. Mihasso a little bit about postpartum depression. Dr. Mihasso, can you d define postpartum depression for us? Um, <coughs> um, postpartum depression, as uh, the term um, says, is um, a condition that happens after delivery and it's an emotional um, uh, uh, sort of co co constituent of uh, symptoms and uh, a lot of uh, most of them are s initially mild what we call postpartum blues and they can come in the form of tearfulness and uh, feeling just low mood mm -hmm. lack of sleep and uh, that sort of uh, um, so those sort of sim symptoms when you talk about depression you're not talking about more severe symptoms mm -hmm. and you're talking about uh, se se uh, severe mood uh, changes severe lack of sleep and um, they, they, they can actually become more tearful and uh, that's a, a more severe spectrum of um, um, emotional changes that can occur after mm -hmm. delivery. Is there anything that happens during pregnancy that can trigger postpartum depression? A lot of things really and um, one of the things we know about pregnancy is that it's a monitored uh, situation. We're all seeing these ladies uh, from week to week and they feel very supported and everything is going to, to plan. Unfortunately, however much you prepare them, labor becomes quite a, 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 a sort of a surprise and a lot of things can go wrong during the process of delivery. One of the things we know is that uh, if women are supported, so if they have a partner next to them, they feel secure, they have a, a, ma a mom or a, a mother-in-law who is supporting them, they, they actually feel more safe and uh, emotionally they, mm -hmm. they tend to cope much better. At delivery, a, f a few other things can happen. Sometimes they have very... Um, uh, rapid deliveries, emergency deliveries in the course of what is apparently a normal labor mm -hmm. and these sort of things actually trigger um, postpartum uh, depression. Uh, other things they can suffer complications like uh, bleeding after in, uh, delivery, uh, they do get, get uh, perineal tears and um, they have to recover from that and those sort of things can... Uh yeah, so, be, so what I'm hearing from you is a lot of the time it, it's more common after birth. Usually after birth, mm. and usually arises from the process of delivery, actually, mm. for most women. Okay. Yeah. Um, Lois, who, who is it that gets postpartum depression? I know Dr. Mihesa has touched on it briefly, but mm -hmm. who gets postpartum depression and postpartum anxiety and why? What kind of woman? Yeah, le let me get it from a wider than from what Dr. Tari has said, that remember, life has been eased, a lot of living things have been eased, huh? But uh, childbearing, like what he is saying, and uh, child rearing is not one of the easiest because the individual has got to really take responsibility. And pregnancy, basically the woman has to take, carry this pregnancy to term and deal with all those changes, be it, be it image, be it the body changes and stuff like that, and hormonal changes. So they've got to bear it on their own. Mm -hmm. And directly, like Dr. Tari puts it, a lot of support is given then, but then once the baby comes out, you know, the focus is usually on the baby. Mm. And uh, this, the, the, the mother is usually just put through situations that are beneficial to the baby. So you eat soup because for the baby needs it. You do this because the baby needs mm. it. And uh, they are sort of like, they feel left alone. Okay. Yeah, they uh, really feel left alone. All right, so it's almost like it's anyone 
It can affect anyone. 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 All right. We'll yeah. come back to some of the signs and symptoms later. But first, um, let's now turn to Lucy and tell us a little bit about your own story. How did you know that what you were going through was postpartum depression? It's actually very sad because I didn't know I had postpartum depression. Yeah. It's, it's after I'd even made a full recovery that I thought back like to what was going on during that period that I figured mm -hmm. I, I, I mean I'd been going through postpartum depression and I had no clue yeah because this this information is really not not available yeah. and what was even sadder was the fact that I was not a first-time mom yeah. so you would imagine that I would have known all oh. these things so this was with your second born this was with my second baby okay. yeah. with your first baby everything was okay I, you know what's interesting Janet is my first baby came when I was I was in school, yeah. I, I was in the middle of exams, okay. so if anything, I'd have thought that that would have been the perfect time for me to get postpartum depression, you know, because everything was, mm. was happening so fast, I was a first time mom and there were so many things that were, were mm. going on, yeah. but that turned out to be a very, like the transition from pregnancy to yeah. me having the baby was very smooth. Yeah. So when I got the second baby and uh, I had all these things that were going on in my head, everything, mm. I mean this very dark time. And I had no idea what yeah. was going on. What were you feeling? What were you thinking when you say it was a dark time? Tell, take us through what your mindset was like. Um, I was a very... <laughs> mm. It was a very uh, tough time because, uh, like I said, I didn't know what, wa what was going on with me. I just knew mm. I was very... I was really sad. I, was, okay. I, I would cry a lot, like I'd, I'd stay in the bedroom or lock myself up in the bathroom and, and really mm. bawl. <laughs> While your baby no was sleeping or somewhere in another the baby room. Was, either the baby's in the room sleeping or not, but I would just cry my eyes out yeah. for no apparent reason. And then I was moody, I was yelling at the, the older baby, the, the young baby when she'd cry, sometimes I'd, I'd it, this makes me so sad, yeah. like I'd hold her and shake her. Yeah. And I didn't, like I felt so horrible because I didn't know what was going on. Yeah. And uh, I remember <laughs> I would take this out on, on my partner and the sad thing was he also had no idea what was going on with me. Yeah. And there are the situations when I had to almost drag myself away from the baby because <laughs> I felt if I continued to stay with the baby, mm. I was going to, ha to harm, to harm yeah. the baby. Yeah. Yeah. So I, re <laughs> I remember an incident where one one day my mother-in-law came to visit and uh, she walked in and i walked out and i think it was god sent and I, i've never told her this but i had just been nursing the baby but i had all these intrusive thoughts in my head mm -hmm. and she, she just knocked and came in and i walked out mm -hmm. and i went for a very long walk i was in sandals i, I was nursing so mm -hmm. I, I was a mess yeah and I can imagine if I had run into someone and someone had actually taken a hard look at me, mm -hmm. they'd have known something was very yeah. wrong. And what I did is I, I, I walked to, to the hospital. Mm -hmm. I walked to Aga Khan. There was a clinic not too far from home. Mm -hmm. And I went and uh, I sat at the casualty, but I didn't know what I was going to tell the doctors because I, mm -hmm. <laughs> I, I didn't physically, I, I, I was not in pain. Exactly. And this was like two and a half weeks after delivery. So I w everything was fine. Yeah. So when I, my time came to go and see the doctor, so I went to the triage and they took my, my vitals and they asked me why I needed to see the doctor. I just said, it's personal. So I went in and finally when I saw the doctor and he asked me what was wrong, I said, I don't know. Mm. And he asked me, are, are you bleeding? I, he, I mean, he checked my uterus, mm. everything was fine. Are you bleeding? No, everything is okay. Are you okay? Yes, headaches. No, I, 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 I couldn't tell what was wrong with yeah. me. So he just said, okay, fine, just have a bit of rest, drink water and rehydrate. Mm. And I went home. Wow. But I took the longer route to, <laughs> to take your time <laughs> to, to get take home. My time so to, at what to point was, were you diagnosed with postpartum depression? I, I never was, Janet. Oh, right. It was okay. because I, when my, I was about to have my, my third born, I was really scared because I, I, I didn't want to go through what I had gone through mm. with a second baby. So I started reading up about baby blues and doing a lot of research and everything that I was finding out, like it was an aha, oh my mm -hmm. God, this is what yeah. had been going on. I, I, I had no idea. And uh, the, the interesting thing is my husband was very supportive yeah. in the sense that he would, he would ask me, you know, what is wrong? What is going on? Have mm -hmm. I done something? What are you Can feeling? I do anything? Yeah. And I could not 
I could not tell him what he would do because I didn't know what was wrong with mm. me. And it's interesting because he says if there's ever a time in our marriage when he thought he would walk out, that was then because wow. I was a horrible person. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. All mm -hmm. right, I'll come back to you just to get more. First of all, thank you for being so courageous to come and share your story. There's a lot of text messages I've been reading as the show started, mm -hmm. and so many women are saying, I've been struggling for seven months. So it almost sounds like a lot of people are suffering in silence, yeah. um, and hopefully this will kind of get people to come out. You Maybe can make just, a comment just before. Just to I... cut to short, Janet, yeah. you know, it's, it's for me even to come here, it, it took a lot of mm. mental preparation, because how do you go... How do you even tell someone, even your closest friend, that I've had thoughts of hurting my baby? You know, that's not a conversation you have during a summer meeting. You know, you know what, guys? I kind of felt like I needed to. Mm. You, you, you understand? Yeah. So it, these are not things you would tell someone and, or be comfortable talking about. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But even now as I speak about it, and now that I'm more comfortable to talk about it, because I've been doing it the past few months, I get ladies and, and women who tell me, oh my God, I've had... I've been in a similar situation yeah. and I've felt mm -hmm. so alone and mm -hmm. so lost mm -hmm. because I don't think anyone can understand. Yeah. yeah. And yeah. later on I think what we really need to try and figure out is the support groups mm -hmm. and where women can go who can they can turn to you. You wanted to Yeah, and you know the fr frustration that Lucy went through again. This is a second baby. Mm. So you should know what to do. Yeah. Really. And 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 you again left alone because you have had a child before mm -hmm. so this second one you should really be an expert you know mm -hmm. like uh, you should be an expert and they should not be a problem yeah. and that pushes a lot of mothers now to even go deeper yeah. into their depression yeah, yeah. can I ask a medical question I don't know how much sense it will make does it, um, it does it affect women more who have a normal delivery as opposed to a cesarean section operation do you find that there's a difference not really, oh. uh, Janet. I think um, this, there's a lot of individual variation in people. Right. So what is bad experience for you might not actually be an, a bad mm. experience for somebody else. And people handle it differently. People cope differently. Mm -hmm. People have different cultural uh, uh, um, backgrounds and uh, different you know, personalities. So it, does, it, does, it actually doesn't uh, make a difference. And I'm sure you'll agree with me that it doesn't really make mm -hmm. um, a difference wh which sort of delivery you've had. Mm -hmm. But if you've had a complication, then that's actually that more, you're more at risk of uh, developing that. Or an emergency delivery which you didn't expect and uh, again afterwards as you mentioned cor correctly you actually left on your own mm. everybody will concentrate on the baby, on the baby. And, and, and you're left on your own yeah and that's very, you know like um i would like people who are, who go through very long uh, kind of uh, labor yeah. and uh, me being one of them really no if if you if you are not like aware that labor can be that long yeah. then i think sometimes it leaves you in a state of uh, mm -hmm. Uh, where you could easily develop, yeah. I'm, I'm not uh, so sure. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's yeah. true. And but then can, can I mm. ask then, mm. is, is, there, is that, in, I mean, cast in a textbook in the sense that all the things you're saying, I had none of those. Yeah. I had a pretty easy pregnancy. Mm -hmm. I had a very easy delivery that I, my labor started at about 6 mm -hmm. in the morning and by 10 a.m. I had mm. the baby. Uh -huh. And it was a normal delivery, and I and had yet you still had and I, yet, yet still I I, ha I went through all this at a time when I thought mentally I was very mm. at a very good place. Mm. As I said, um, you might not actually have any trigger factors at uh -huh. all. You might not identify mm. anything that potentially can lead to mm. that, and uh, that's the variation you have individually, mm. and uh, where we are and that sort of thing. Mm. And mm -hmm. it can happen to anybody, generally speaking. It can happen to anybody, but maybe I can ask you, Lucy, were there any sort of issues you may have been having leading up to your to the second baby mm -hmm. because when you say anyone does it mean like Lucy myself very good pregnancy um, is, is there no trigger before birth that can set off postpartum depression maybe I don't know an issue at home a domestic there's some women who've SMS and said I had issues with my partner and I think it carried over into postpartum mm -hmm. uh, so th does it mean that you can have absolutely no issues at all and still have postpartum depression quite possible Janet and uh, as I said there are some easier ones where you can identify a trigger factors so a partner left you during the, the course of pregnancy mm -hmm. or you're having problems with that at home and things like that but you can actually have no risk factors at all and um, I mm -hmm. think your case is uh, one when Lucy um, mentions there's no term. textbook I agree with her I think the scary thing is a lot of women are not told about it I feel like as you're going through the clinics 
one of the things you should be told is by the way there is this thing called postpartum yeah. depression uh -huh. yeah. that could affect or that you should know about maybe as a gynecologist as an expert in the field you could shed some light on maybe why that doesn't seem to be the case and whether or not this should really be introduced now I think it's a, an important part of managing the pregnancy actually you need to talk about what's going to happen after women have had children and uh, one of the things that uh, quite often happens for most of us I think we are concentrating on the antenatal period yeah. where we are seeing these women very frequently and as soon as they have delivered we think we have, the problem is finished and mm. we wash our hands off and but that so that <laughs> in other developed countries actually they have home visits and there's a community mm -hmm. nurse who comes mm -hmm. to your house mm -hmm. as soon as you get home mm -hmm. to know first of all do you have support are you coping very well can you manage mm -hmm. to sleep you know mm -hmm. they want to get you back to normal as fast mm -hmm. as possible and mm -hmm. some of the things that uh, they, they, they look for is uh, your, your changes in mood and things yeah, like that. Yeah that's mm -hmm. so important to introduce yeah. yeah. I think you have a different uh, healthcare system and yeah. I think we're already um, st struggling to cope with the guys in the hospital to start with so to stretch anybody to the community my feeling is that we actually don't even have anybody who can go outside there but that's why I, I, I place it right at you because as my gynecologist I think because I had a, a doctor who I was seeing during the whole prenatal period yeah. instead of just checking whether my uterus has contracted and whether the bleeding has stopped ask me how I'm doing mm. yeah. I think I, 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 think, mm. I think that is where maybe Dr. Tari is saying mm -hmm. that, you know, uh, for a doctor mostly, you know, they are, they, they are, they are, they are looking for clinical, clinical symptoms. Mm -hmm. And the whole thing about feelings and all this kind of, uh, like I want to harm my baby, might not really cross their mind at that particular mm -hmm. time. And particularly I've experienced that because they, they are packed with who is the next person, mm -hmm. who is the next person. And so if there are no clinical issues, sometimes it really gets... But I want to appreciate that a number of doctors then stop for a moment, and when they know they cannot attend to you, they usually reach out and refer you to mm. other people. There's a lot of comments and uh, SMSs coming in, and later on we'll be bringing up some tweets. Um, someone here says, um, Hi, Janet, I have four children. The depression happened the worst with the first. It's so sad. I feel guilty uh, to date and then someone else here says um, I gave birth to my first child and seven months later I'm still having postpartum depression Pauline in Nairobi says some of the causes of postpartum depression are family history and someone else here finally says I'm 21 years old I have a seven month old baby up to date I suffer from postpartum depression sometimes it gets so serious after getting ha angry with my boyfriend I again release it on my baby I don't like it and I want to know how to deal with it. So that's Stephanie from Embakasi. So hopefully we'll get into that in just a moment. We also have some tweets. Let's see if we can bring up some tweets. Um, Aboki Edward says, Is there a certain age group that affects more or maybe uh, associated with postpartum depression? And then what are the risk factors for postpartum psychosis in patients with no history of psychiatric disease? And finally, there is a need to emphasize individual birth plans to help women be prepared to avoid any stress during delivery. Um, so there's some questions and comments there. Before we go into, again, some of the triggers and, and the factors, there's um, Bernard from Kayole is asking, does postpartum depression also affect men? Or is there a side of it? And maybe in a bit, Lucy can just comment a little bit about how your husband was able to deal. Mm -hmm. But is... Is there a form of depression that also affects men post delivery? I think there actually is, and um, it just comes from the same same um, um, sort of relationship Lucy has uh, expressed today. Mm -hmm. And the more you are, the, 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 has, the wife is affected, the more likely the, the partner mm -hmm. is going to be affected. Mm -hmm. It hasn't been described m in most standard textbooks, but it actually does occur. Mm -hmm. And a few, uh, we have a few cases that of, of that happening with the men. With the men. Mm -hmm. um, what happens if postpartum depression, Lois, is left untreated? I think basically like wh what Lucy classically did uh, say is that someone can really harm that child, mm. including, you know, killing that child. And uh, then the other thing, like with any other depression, the person can actually go down clinically and become like a mess or a wreck in terms of, because mm. again, there is this fear. And maybe Dr. Tari may, uh, may, may clear that because most people believe that once you put on some antidepressant, then you can never recover fully. Mm -hmm. And then the whole fear of if I take uh, medication because my, I'm, I'm breastfeeding, then this medication will also affect my child. Which is what I want to ask you. Someone else asked that as well. Mm -hmm. Can they be on medication? 
for antidepressants and still breastfeed? Yeah, most antidepressants are safe in pregnancy, in uh, breastfeeding actually, so that's uh, not a problem at all. Okay. Yeah. So, someone else has asked um, if they want to seek psy psychiatric help or they want to see a psychologist, but they find like that person is booked for even months. What can they do in the interim if they know they are struggling with postpartum depression but they have two, three months before they see a counsellor? What can they do in the interim? I think the, 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 first, uh, the, the most important thing that I think we really need to understand is basically depression is an emotional mm -hmm. disorder to do with feelings, to do with thoughts, to do with some beliefs that have come into this person and so if the psychiatrist perhaps is booked and is not available then it's also important to talk to someone mm -hmm. you know and seek support from someone and that you can trust and because like like lucy did uh, mention that these issues of shame yeah because i don't i can't tell you for sure that i want to do this to my baby mm -hmm. so it's important that at least you can identify reach out mm -hmm. to someone you can trust yeah. and just tell them what's going on with you because uh, then it eases that kind of uh, um, uh, kind of uh, pressure all right I, I want to play a video shortly but before then we like i'd like to get into some of the the signs mm -hmm. and symptoms i know that dr alluded to them earlier mm -hmm. severe mm -hmm. you know wanting to sleep a lot and that kind of thing but what are some of the I would say hallmark symptoms of someone with postpartum depression uh-huh I think uh, about, um, uh, together with what Dr. Tari said I think one of the very classic and I don't know whether it's to Africa also is just this whole thing about crying a lot and getting overwhelmed you know, even the simple thing of taking care of this baby is overwhelming. And then sleeplessness, because even when the baby is asleep, you keep on, you know, like waking up in the middle of the night, mm -hmm. maybe thinking the baby is crying, you know, mm -hmm. hearing that cry mm -hmm. in, in, in your head. And then, uh, at, again, I think what I've, I've found and I've seen with a lot of women is the, the whole thing of fear. You know, like I'm not the best mom, and everybody's telling me what I think I can't do, mm -hmm. and uh, I'm, I'm breastfeeding, but the baby is not getting well, the baby is still crying, so I'm the worst mom. Mm -hmm. And maybe I don't know how to take care of the baby. Yeah. And so they are left there almost disconnected mm -hmm. to the child. And a number of them do quite keep away from the child. Blessed are them mm -hmm. if they have a good uh, caretaker, mm -hmm. but if this child is with them, then more often than not, they will just be crying. Yeah. You yeah. wanted to comment? I just wanted to comment on, mm -hmm. on the disconnect mm -hmm. because I think that for me was, was a, is one of the things that I actually even uh -huh. struggle with uh -huh. because the time when ideally I should have been bonding with my baby, uh -huh. mm -hmm. there was all these other things that were going on. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So for me, now much later and when I got better is when I had to try and cultivate a relationship with, with the baby. Mm -hmm. And I think there was a period that was lost. Mm -hmm. So even the bonding to date mm -hmm. is, is something that I actively have to try and work hard. And I think mm -hmm. I could be wrong that I, does this affect the child? Because I find mm -hmm. now with the baby, mm -hmm. even for her creating bonds with other people is a struggle. Like oh. she, it's very hard for her to, to, to have mm -hmm. strong connections. That's a really good connect. question. And I was going to ask so next, does postpartum depression, yeah. uh, depression affect children? So that's a great question. Yeah. What can you tell us because about I that? <laughs> yeah. I'm not quite sure whether I can answer this question, but I would, I would, I would think that it does affect children, actually. It does. I would probably ask the psychologist it does. or the yeah, it does. because they do look after children. It does because you see the very first like um, 72 or even the first um, 30 days of a child the most important thing is touch a sense of touch and that cuddlingness and and I remember previously even in the hospitals where they used to have the babies in the nursery they have changed and they are putting them next to the mothers mm -hmm. yeah because of that important connecting connecting with someone who is a significant we call it a significant other and if this child misses just that small small moment eh? then that child will definitely have to struggle a little mm -hmm. with getting into you know closeness with other people mm -hmm. we'll come back to that mm -hmm. in just a moment uh, lucy because you've raised a good point mm -hmm. what happens after how mm -hmm. do you then reconnect mm -hmm. with your child but uh, lucy as you mentioned earlier on is a television producer um her and and her company are working on a film that raises awareness on postpartum depression we have uh, a snippet of it let's take a look at what she's put together mm -hmm. I'm Shike. What is wrong with you? Really?
really powerful. I, I watched a, a, a longer a version of it. Is it a movie that you're working on? Yeah, we, it's a movie we are doing about postpartum depression. Again, because it's so stigmatized and so mm. something that we just are not comfortable talking about. Yeah. And we hope this is one of the things that will open up the conversations and, right. and say, see, mm. it, it's something mm -hmm. most women go through mm -hmm. and it's something that you yeah. can overcome. So Lucy, it's how did you right. start your road to recovery? You mm -hmm. read about it, you said, you were like, oh, okay, so I'm not alone. Mm -hmm. Then what? What did you do to get to where you are today? Janet, I, I, I didn't do anything. Because I, I found out it was postpartum depression, I think a few years after, mm -hmm. oh. you know. But I think there's a part of me that became more spiritual mm -hmm. uh, uh -huh. when the baby was, was I, I think about three, four months. Mm -hmm. I tried to reconnect uh, with God and I became a much more spiritual person. Okay. And I think that sort of helped mm -hmm. me get get past yeah. what I, I didn't know I was going through. And yeah. you did yeah. also mention your husband's support? Mm. Oh, because yeah. for honestly, he would have walked me. away like mm. most, uh, mm. actually most spouses do walk mm. away. Yeah. And they kind of say, once you sort out the baby, then I will be back. And yeah. a number of them actually even leave the, 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 the bedroom where mm. the mother and the baby are and seek if they have, if they have the, 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 the generosity of having another bedroom, mm -hmm. most of them do move to the next bedroom. Okay, okay. before we yeah. get some of your final comments, another question here is, can you get postpartum depression anxiety much later after the birth of your child? If you get it maybe when your child is six months or ten months, is that a possibility? Actually, that is a great possibility. Mm. Uh, between two to six months, mm. there is that possibility and the danger of actually developing the post-depression. And then, of course, now the road to recovery, like we're saying, can take a longer period depending on, okay, by, 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 by um, discovery, like what Lucy did, mm -hmm. to just know that this is what I'm going through, mm -hmm. she did get to recover. But okay. some people do now suffer that, and I know, like, um, I know one or two cases who now the, having another baby is a no-go zone. Mm -hmm. They can't just have another baby. Yeah, for simply sure because they happen. fear it. And I, I can relate to that because, again, even thinking of having that the third child was, uh -huh. was a big battle mm -hmm. mentally for mm -hmm. me because I didn't think I wanted to go through that uh -huh. again. Uh -huh. And it was interesting because that came without any complications, and mm -hmm. I was fine. Wow which just doesn't Wow. <laughs> <laughs> um, before, again, we get your final comments, Lucy raised a really um, important point about reconnecting mm -hmm. with your child. What kind of tips can you give a mom who wants to reconnect with the child because of lost time? Uh, for, for me, what, what would be most important is that, that just that acknowledging for, for, for the person, for the person themselves, they acknowledge and then they get into activities because maybe the child might not understand, but now you look for areas where the child seems to have had a disconnect mm -hmm. and then you actually fill in those gaps. Like um, uh, cases of where they are connected more mm -hmm. to, the, to the, maybe the nanny or they are connecting more to the dad, mm -hmm. then you now get into that space yeah. and also create it. And that what about the problem. child? Because she mentioned sometimes the feeling like maybe my child isn't socializing as well as other children. How do you hone that child to become sort of like more social and not feel like they're disconnecting with other people very um, briefly? I believe that the, the, the greatest example is for you to be able to reach out to that child and put them into the middle to interact with the other children. Because mm -hmm. uh, a, 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 a typical issue is that the child will always want to cling then back to the person that they are connected with. Mm -hmm. So it's to withdraw that child from the clinginess mm -hmm. and then maybe take them out to play, um, walk with them into social lines, like when you're going to say worship places, allow them to join the other, peop uh, the okay. other persons mm -hmm. and then just create Create that awareness if they can understand. Mm -hmm. Create that awareness that you know you need to be with other people and sometimes sitting there mm -hmm. to support them. And your final comment in terms of overcoming postpartum depression and getting help, what would you like to say about it? I think that? for me my final um, uh, comment is that this is a reality and uh, it's not some uh, myth outside there or some uh, uh, demonic issue like most people would want to put it. And if anyone goes through some of the symptoms that we have highlighted here, then they really need to seek help. Maybe visit the nearest hospital or speak to a professional if other people are not listening to you. All right, thank you so much for that. And, and if you can do it with your partner, or the person who's walking the journey yeah. with you so that they understand. Mm -hmm. Thank you for that, Lois. Uh, yeah. Doctor, your parting shot in terms of a woman who may be carrying a pregnancy right now, she may be having 
these fears and hesitations, what would you like to say to her about postpartum depression? I think it's good to, to know something about it. We have internet and we have access to materials these days. You can read about it, discuss with your doctor about it, and your doctor may actually now uh, choose that opportunity to look for other risk factors in, yourself, in, in, in you that can uh, predispose you to postpartum depression. As well, after delivery, I think you need to actually take initiative to try and find out whether how you can get information, how you can connect back to the hospital. Because most people, as soon as they, they are discharged, their contact is lost and they just follow up with immunization, which is actually focusing on the babies. Mm. And I think as healthcare providers, we know that there's a gap actually. We are focusing too much on whether they're bleeding and things like that. Things that tend to, to that are bothered us over time. We're not looking at the little smaller things we think are small, but emotionally, actually, that, that would be mm. the, ma the main part of uh, the care of this woman as she leaves hospital. And I think the care has to take more, more than one person. For the gynecologist or obstetrician, after delivery, I think more, more of the work is actually done by somebody else. So they try to see pediatricians more than us. Okay. They probably come for one, for one more visit to discuss contraception and stuff like that. Mm. So if you can have a chance to, well, somebody else can actually pick up these sort of things and redirect them back to us from the pediatric clinic or maybe if there's a community nurse mm. or something closer. So there needs to be a system in place there for needs those to be a system, for that to happen. Okay. So it doesn't take one person. And uh, as soon as this happens, we think we need to be looking for other people to get Absolutely. involved. Absolutely. So psychiatrists, okay. psychologists, and stuff. All right. Others. Thank you so much. Thank you for that. And Lucy, once again, thank you so much. Um, your two cents for a woman. Again, someone has just said, Janet, I didn't know I was suffering postpartum depression. I've been unfair to my baby, and the baby's father has left me, saying I'm rude and disorganized. My baby is seven months old, and I gave birth through cesarean section. So there's a lot of women out there. What would you want to say to them? Um, and then towards the end tell us a little bit about maybe when we can expect the film to come out. Okay, I think it, it makes me so sad when, when I hear something like that because she has no idea and the partner has left. Yeah. What I'd, I'd ask is when a, for a new mom, for anyone who goes to visit a new mom, instead of just who are on the baby, take a moment to ask the mom how are you doing? Yeah. Because I think you just needs that one question and all these things can come because you just need to tell one person you can tell mm -hmm. and everything is okay and uh, I don't think we should be ashamed that we've gone through postpartum depression anyone who's gone through it or anyone who's going through it I don't think there's a shame at, there should be a shame attached to it because as the doctor said it's emotional and it's one of those things I think we, we have no control over mm -hmm. And uh, we should be free to talk about it, especially to young moms and new moms, mm -hmm. because you don't know whose life, the mother or the baby, you could be saving. Exactly. Yeah. A little bit about the film as we wind up completely, um, maybe. The film is very young. It's mm -hmm. a work of, mm -hmm. a labor of love. So we are taking our time with it. Okay. But you will definitely Please make do. all the noise when it's out there. And thank you so <laughs> much for coming, Lucy, sharing your story. Mm -hmm. You've definitely helped a lot of women and men so. as well, mm -hmm. um, couples. And thank you as well to, to, to Lois and Dr. Mia. So thank you for watching Monday's special. I'm Janet Bogwandisho. Do have a good night. <laughs>